Thank you for joining me on our series on generalized method of movements. This will cover nine topics. The first is understanding GMM, which is what I'm taking now, to be followed by how to estimate one step difference GMM. I will also show you how to estimate two step difference GMM, one step system GMM, two step system GMM. I will show you how you can decide between either the difference or system GMM, how you can interpret any GMM output, and how you can generate long-run GMM coefficients. Lastly, this series will cover how you can plot the year dummies from either the difference or system GMM. So let's dig in. What is GMM? It is a generic method for estimating parameters in statistical models. It uses moment conditions. Moment conditions are simply instruments that are functions of the model parameters and the data such that their expectation is zero are the parameters true values. GMM is also a dynamic panel data estimator. So what is panel data? Panel data is also called longitudinal data. They are multi-dimensional data involving measurements over time. They contain observations of multiple phenomena obtained over multiple time periods for the same units. These units can be firms, they can be individuals, countries, etc. If you need to know more about panel data, please watch my video on tips to building panel data. So what is panel data analysis? It is a statistical method widely used to analyze two-dimensional data. So why use GMM? Like I said before, GMM is a dynamic panel data estimator. GMM controls for endogeneity of the lagged dependent variable in a dynamic panel data model. Endogeneity simply means there is correlation between the explanatory variable and the error term in that model. GMM also controls for omitted variable bias. It controls for unobserved panel heterogeneity. It also controls for measurement errors in your data. So what is the case for GMM? Now we are going to assume that we have a linear regression model, as you can see on the screen, that has an endogenous regressor. And this model is given by y equals x prime beta plus u. u in this case is the error term. y and u are n by 1 vectors. Beta is a k by 1 vector of unknown parameters. x is a n by k matrix of explanatory variables. Now, because of the assumption of endogeneity, we need to assume that there is another matrix Z that is N by L, where L is greater than K. The Z matrix in this case is assumed to comprise a set of variables that are highly correlated with X, that is the explanatory variables, but orthogonal to the error term. Orthogonality in this case is synonymous to saying that the Z matrix comprises variables that are not correlated with the error term. Let me explain some GMM specifics at this point. Your n, which is the number of cross-sections or groups, must be greater than t. t here represents the time span in your data. GMM uses instrumental variable estimation. The instruments must be exogenous, as shown on the screen, and the number of instruments must be lower or equal to the number of groups in your panel. Now let's talk about the two main GMM estimators that we are all familiar with, difference GMM and system GMM. And you cannot talk about difference or system GMM without referring to any of these authors as shown on the screen. So that means for you to get at least the basic understanding of GMM, you need to read at least one of these papers. They are definitely technical, no doubt about it, but honestly, I don't think you have a choice. If you really want to know more about GMM, I will encourage you to get one of these papers to read through. Like I said before, GMM is designed for situation when you have a dynamic panel model, where you have a small t and large n, where the independent variables are not strictly exogenous, that is, they are correlated with the error term, meaning that there is endogeneity in your model. GMM is also designed where you have arbitrarily distributed fixed effects, where you have heteroscedasticity 
or auto correlation. In discussing GMM, we talk about instruments, we talk about moment conditions or identifying restrictions. In GMM, there are two categories of instruments, internal instruments and external instruments. Using the extra bond two command in Stata, variables listed within the brackets of the GMM style instruments are referred to as internal instruments, while variables listed within the brackets of the IV style here are referred to as external instruments. Let's talk about difference GMM. It was proposed by Arellano and Bond 1991. The different GMM corrects endogeneity by transforming all regressors through differencing. It also removes fixed effects in that process. However, this false difference transformation has its own weakness. This is because it subtracts the previous observation from the contemporaneous one, thereby magnifying gaps in any unbalanced panel. So if you are having an unbalanced panel, applying the difference GMM may weaken your result to some extent. How about the system GMM? System GMM was proposed by Arellano and Bova 1995 and Blondell and Bond 1998. The system GMM also corrects endogeneity, but now by introducing more instruments to dramatically improve efficiency of the estimator. It transforms the instruments to make them uncorrelated, that is, exogenous to the fixed effects. It builds a system of two equations. The first is the original equation and the second is the transformed equation. System GMM uses orthogonal deviations. Instead of subtracting the previous observation from the contemporaneous one, it now subtracts the average of all future available observations of a variable. Meaning that now, no matter how many gaps you have in your data, such are computable for all observations except the last for each individual. So it now minimizes data loss than what obtains under the difference GMM. So let's look at GMM model specifications under the difference GMM. On the screen is the initial model followed by the transformed model in equation 2. By transforming the regressors through first differencing, the fixed effect is removed as it does not vary with time, but the problem of endogeneity still remains. Unobserved fixed effects no longer enter the equation as they are by assumption constant between periods. Also, the first difference lacked dependent variable is instrumented with its past levels and now changes in the dependent variable are assumed to be represented by equation 2 as you can see here. So equation 2 still shows that there is endogeneity in the model due to the lag dependent variable being correlated with the error term. And here is the composition of the error term. So there is correlation between yt minus 1 and et minus 1. Let's look at system GMM model specification. Still using the initial model as you can see on the screen. Now we are going to assume that equation 1 is a random work model and y is a persistent variable, that is the dependent variable is persistent. If that is the case, applying the difference GMM will yield biased and inefficient estimates of phi. Phi here is a parameter to be estimated for the lag dependent variable. According to Blondell and Bond 1998, the poor performance of difference GMM in this case is attributed to the use of poor instruments. So in this case, the system GMM is applicable. This is because it will express one equation in level form with first differences as instruments and the second equation is expressed in first difference form with levels as instruments. The approach involves the use of a greater number of moment conditions. Remember I said moment conditions are simply instruments. But Monte Carlo evidence suggests that when t, the time span is short and the dependent variable is persistent, there are gains in precision and small sample bias is reduced when the system GMM is applied. Also, in the presence of heteroscedasticity and serial correlation, a two-step system GMM estimator should be used by exploiting a weighting matrix using residuals from the first step. However, in finite samples, such standard errors tend to be downward biased, and the conventional approach by practitioners in such a situation is to use what is known as a Weinmeier adjustment to correct for such small sample.
bias. So how do you decide between difference of system GMM specification? Still using the initial model, the rule of thumb proposed by Bond 2001 is that you have to first estimate this initial model by pooled OLS estimation and by LSDV estimation technique, that is the fixed effects approach. The pooled OLS estimate for phi, which is the parameter to be estimated, will be considered as an upper bound estimate while that of the fixed effects will be considered as a lower bound estimate. If the difference GMM estimate obtained is close to or below the fixed effects estimate, this suggests that the former estimate is downward biased because of weak instrumentation. In that case, a system GMM estimator should be applied. I will expatiate on this process more when I give you a practical example. It is also advisable to use the system GMM like I explained before if the model exhibits a random walk. What are the GMM diagnostics that we need to be aware of? The first is we always have two tests for instruments validity, the Hansen test and the Sagan test. Failure to reject any of these tests will give support to the choice of instruments. But most times, we use the Hansen statistic to test for instrument validity. The second diagnostic check-in is the test for autocorrelation of the error term. Failure to reject the null hypothesis of no second order serial correlation implies that the original error term is serially uncorrelated and the moment conditions are correctly specified. Let me say a word or two on the Hansen statistic. There's need to be suspicious of the Hansen statistic. If the p-values look too good to be true, that is because they are too good to be true. If you have p-values between 0.2 and 0.4, you have to be cautious. You have to be wary if it's between 0.4 and 0.6. You must treat your result with some skepticism if it's between 0.6 and 0.9. You simply have to ignore your results if the p-values are over 0.9. At this point, you'll be wondering then what is the applicable or suitable p-value. I will leave that to the reader. And this is simply because most of the empirical papers out there that are even published by high-impact journals, those who have undertaken the GMM methods, they report p-values between 0.4 and even 0.6. What are the challenges of estimating GMM? They are complicated and they can easily generate invalid estimates. No doubt about that. GMM codes can easily be manipulated and that will give you different results. GMM does not account for cross-sectional dependence. It does not account for structural breaks. It is not advisable for panel with very long time series. If you have such a panel, your estimators in that case will be PMG, MG, and DFE. GMM results react gravely to variables listed in the IV style bracket, that is external instruments. The more you change these variables, the more your result changes. If you have too many instruments, it will weaken both the Sagan and Hansen test, and you are likely to have some implausible p-values. Results are also biased if the number of instruments outnumber individual panels in the data. Now, the literature is still not clear on what is too many instruments, but Monte Carlo simulation suggests that by cutting the number of instruments in half, you can reduce the bias in your results by 40%. Like I said before, please, you need to read some of these papers to get deeper understanding about the GMM estimation technique. There are technical papers, no doubt about it, but at least read Rudman 2009. Most of the um, extracts from, from this video were taken from Rudman 2009. So please, I will encourage everybody listening to me to read Rudman 2009. It has some, um, it has some uh, practical examples in that paper that you can easily follow. So please read Rudman 2009. Next video will be how to estimate one step difference GMM. Then we go practical. As I do it, please just follow me and do the same with your data. Thank you for watching. It's been a pleasure teaching you this GMM tutorial. Please stay with me on my subsequent videos where I show you the practical examples to estimating the different techniques within the GMM framework. If you need the do file that I'll be using or any do file I've used in my past videos, you can assess them all on my website. I will also encourage you to follow me on Twitter to share my posts whenever you see them. Follow me on Facebook, join my Facebook community. I'm on Facebook Live. And also, I'm also on Reddit, so you can always upvote any of my uh, posts whenever you see them. Please don't go away. I'll be right back with my video on how to estimate 
one step difference, GMM.